morning. Feels like night, at least. I can't believe it's getting dark here at 4.30. But... Yeah. All right. Okay, are we, are we still okay with some review? Sure. Okay. Mm. So, hang on, sorry. Solve these following systems. I just want to go over some solving systems with equations real quick. Okay. So the systems are 2x plus y minus 2z equals 1. 6x, oh, sorry. Plus 2y minus 4z equals 3. And 4x minus 2y plus 3z equals 5. Okay. First of all, are you com comfortable with two equations and two unknowns? Yes. Okay. So we're going to use elimination here. The only thing when you have three equations and three unknowns is you try to pick a variable, eliminate it to create equation number four, pick the same variable, eliminate it, using two different equations, create equation number five. So my equations four and five are going to have two variables only. Okay. Look okay. at these, and I number my equations here just because when you're working with three equations and three variables, you end up with lots of equations on your page. And if you number them, it's easier to sort them out and keep them straight. What variable looks like it can be eliminated really easily? Mm, y. Okay, by doing what? Uh, well, 2 and 3, can't you just... So we're going to add, we're going to add 2 and 3. Okay, so that's going to cre create equation number 4. What is that going to be? 10x. My, minus z equals 8. Okay. Now, using any of the other two equations, 1 and 3 or 1 and 2, can I eliminate y again? Mm. Yes. By doing what? You can multiply 1 by 2. Okay, good. I'm going to rewrite 1 right there, and I'm going to multiply it by 2. And now I'm going to do what? I'm going to add it to equation 3. Right. So I'm going to add this one and this one to come up with equation 5. What is equation 5? 10x minus 8z. Oh, I'm adding 1 to 3. Adding? Mm-hmm. 8x, 8x minus z equals 7. Yeah. Okay. Now, solve this set of equations. What do I have to do to solve this? You could multiply the bottom one by a negative. You could do that, and but you should be comfortable enough with subtraction. Let's just subtract 5 from 4. In other words, so these are the same x. things, so if I subtract the equations in either order, the z is going to disappear. But so, to get positive numbers, I want to subtract 4 minus 5. So x equals 1 half. Yeah, now once you have one variable solved for, I can go back into either 4 or 5 and solve for z. 
let's see, I believe z has to be negative 3. Mm -hmm. So z equals negative 3. Does that work? Let's see, 4 minus a negative 3 is equal to 7. Okay. And now, to get y, I go back into any of the equations of the first three that have all three variables, and I can use the simplest one there is. To me, that looks like equation one. So let's solve for, what am I solving for, y? Mm -hmm. And x was one-half. So if I use this equation right there, I get two times one-half plus y minus 2 times negative 3, negative three equals 1. So now I have 1 plus y plus 6 equals 1. I get y equal minus 6. And there's my three solutions. And that's a very typical problem when you have three variables and three equations. And we solved it about as quickly as one can do. So you're never going to have more than one of these on a test. They just take too long. I mean, they, they typically are 10 to 15 minute problems. This was easy because they gave us numbers that allowed me to immediately cancel y and then I only had to multiply one equation by the number 2 to cancel y again. In other words, had I set out to cancel z or x, there would have been a lot more arithmetic involved. So selecting which variable to cancel the first time is, is a little bit critical. I mean, you could actually pick any of them as long as you know how to what to do. You know, sometimes you have to multiply two equations by different numbers in order to be able to cancel or eliminate a variable. Okay. This is about the degree of difficulty they should give. I don't even like having a half as an answer. <laughs> Makes the arithmetic too hard. Okay, what else do you have? Uh... Can we graph piecewise from uh -huh. functions? Sure. So the three equations I have are fx equals negative absolute value plus x plus 3. Hold on. Sorry. Inside the absolute value is x plus 3? Yep. Okay. Uh, plus 5 if x equals, I mean, if x is less than negative 1. Okay. Uh, the next one is if x equals 1 half x minus 2. Quantity or like this? Is there a parenthesis uh, around the x minus 2? No. Okay. If 2 is greater than, I mean, if 2 is less than, sorry, or equal to x. Both of them equal? What? Do both of them no. have less than or equal sign? Yes. Okay. But it's 2 on the left center equal to and five on the greater than or equal to. Okay, we're missing a, a gap at the moment. Usually they put them in order and there would be something going from minus one to two. Is that next? Mm -hmm. Uh it's okay. If there's a gap, there's a gap. It just won't be a continuous function. Okay.
but this isn't the way I'm used to seeing them, so I, I suspect perhaps you might have read it wrong, but is there a third function? You said there were three functions. Yeah. What's the third one? X, I mean fx equals 5. If x is greater than 5? Yeah. You sure that's right? Mm hmm That's okay. exactly what's written down. Okay. All right. The way I always start these is upper right-hand corner. Okay. In other words, let's graph this function, but stop the graph when we get the minus 1. In other words, it's only in, to the left of the vertical line, minus 1, that we're going to have this graph. Now, you don't have to draw that vertical line, but it's kind of key to think about it that way. All right, if I'm going to graph the function x plus 3 plus 5, how would I graph that? Where's the vertex? In other words, we know absolute value functions look something like this. If they're plus, they look like this. If they're minus. So this has certainly got a minus sign in front of it. The x plus 3 indicates that it is horizontally shifted by 3 units to the left. So that when x is minus 3, let's see. If we're looking for a zero point, notice that a zero point, in other words, if we're looking where that's going to cross the x-axis, let's find those two zero points. Okay, when x is 2, f of x is zero, correct? Mm-hmm. So there, there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to show you both. Now, obviously, this is outside of the domain, right? But here's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, the other zero point is minus 8. When x is minus 8, then f of x is 0. So if I were to go out to minus 8... the function would look something like this. And I know that it stops right there so that I can essentially erase the right half of it. Okay. Now, there's a couple of points we need to label here. First of all, when even though x has to be less than minus 1, it's worth knowing what that point is right there. It's going to be an open circle, not a closed circle. But so let's plug in minus 1. Well, when I plug in minus 1 for x, what do I get? I get the absolute value of 2 with a negative sign plus 5. f of x is going to be 3. So that's where that point comes. Okay. The, um, this point right here comes when You can see, if you look at this absolute value function, you can see where the highest point is going to be. Where is it got to be? What's the f of x value of this vertex? Uh, 
Negative three times five. It's always going to be plus five, and I'll tell you why. What's the smallest that that can be? Uh, or I should I say the know. largest. The largest that that can be is zero. Okay? Because if you take the absolute value of any number and then stick a negative sign in front of it, if this number is anything but zero, let's say this number is one or two or three, then it causes f of x to be less than five, right? So there's only one place where f of x is equal to five, and that's when x is equal to precisely minus three. So this vertex comes at minus three comma five. This point here comes at minus one comma three. This other key point over here comes at minus eight comma zero. Okay, so we have every key point on that part of the function. Now, okay. let's go to the rest of it. First of all, I'm going to erase that thing that looked like a closed circle. And my graph isn't exactly right here, but it's a, it's a approximate. It's enough. Now we notice that there's a gap from minus 1 to 2. So between here and here, there's nothing at all. So the next part we reach is 2. In other words, we're still going to focus on the right-hand column. We're going to go down to the next row. And here we're going from 2 to 5, closed dots in both places. Well, when x is 2, what is this worth? Uh, negative 1. Uh -huh. So that point is going to be a closed dot right there. We can see that we're looking at a linear function. It's a straight line. So it's all we got to do is find another point on it, and we'll connect it with a straight line, and that's the graph of the middle part. Well, let's substitute 5. When x is 5, what is f of x? Uh, negative 1. Negative 0.5? Yeah, if you substitute 5 in for this middle function here, what do you get? You get 5 halves minus 2, which is plus a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this point here is 2 comma minus 1. This point here is 5 comma 1 half. We're going to join it with a straight line. Okay, there's the middle part plotted. And then the only part left is this part here. When x is greater than 5, in other words, everything in that direction, what, how do I plot that function? What does f of x equal 5 look like? Mm. Like, is it, isn't it just a straight line horizontal, at y equals 5? The horizontal line at y equals 5, like that. So if I want to put an arrow on that, I can. If I want to put an arrow on that, I can. And there's your result. Now, like I said, this is a bit unusual. Maybe it's because you're in honors algebra. Uh, it's the first time I've seen a piecewise function that had a complete gap anywhere in the domain. In other words, the domain of this function is negative infinity to minus 1 and then 2 to positive infinity. There are no values between minus 1 and 2. Okay. Okay. And with piecewise functions, they usually make you go both ways. 
In other words, they make you graph a piecewise function and they make you uh, come up with the function given a graph. So the trick here is if this was what was given to us, could we come up with the piecewise function? And again, we would want to go from x less than 1 and figure out, well, what is that function right there? And it wouldn't take us too long to come up with the fact that that's the negative absolute value of x plus 3 plus 5. It might take us a while, but we'd come up with it eventually. Mm -hmm. We can see there was nothing in here. We'd see that that's a straight line with a slope of a half, and it would eventually go through the y-axis down here. So we could figure out the equation of that line. Whenever you have two points, you can figure out the equation of that line. And finally, the third piece we'd have to fit into a function is this part. That's pretty easy. f of x equals 5. But again, if I'm going the other direction, I'm going to start in the upper right. And then I'm going to find the function that goes with that. And then I'm going to go to the middle right in my domain and find the function that goes with that. In other words, I'm going to go in the exact reverse process. OK, you have any questions on piecewise? Yeah. Okay. Okay, one more. Uh, solve the quadratic system. Y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. And... That it? Uh, y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4. Plus 4? Yep. Okay. There's two methods of solving a system of equations. There's substitution and there's elimination. What are we going to use here? Substitution. Yeah, and this is a particular easy form of substitution because both equations are given in terms of y. Well, these two y's are the same y. They're not always, but in this problem, this y equals that y, which means I can set that equal to that and solve it. Solve this equation. First of all, how are we going to solve this? Mm. How do you solve quadratics typically? Subtract the x squared. Get everything on one side and leave zero mm -hmm. on the other. That's the standard way. So okay. let's just take everything over there and move it to the left side. So how many x squareds are we going to have? One. How many x's? Uh, six. How many numbers? Negative ten. Now, there's not very many factors of 10. 10 and 1 and 5 and 2, and neither one of them are going to subtract to 6. So I can tell immediately that this is not going to factor nicely, so I have to use the quadratic formula. What's the general formula? Uh, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
Now, one way, let me help you memorize this a little bit. If I were to break that up into two fractions, notice the first part. That's the formula for the vertex of a quadratic. So if you happen to know that, that it's minus b over 2a, then it helps you remember the quadratic. Or if you know the quadratic, it helps you remember what the formula for the x-coordinate of the vertex is on any quadratic. And okay. this part here is important enough that it has its own name. It's called the discriminant. If we want to do a very fast analysis on this thing to determine whether we have real solutions or imaginary solutions, we start by just figuring out whether the, the discriminant is greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero. Well, I can tell right away that it's going to be greater than zero, because b squared is 36, minus 4 times 1 times minus 10, this whole thing's going to add to 76. So the discriminant is positive. But the fact that it even has its own name tends to make memorizing the quadratic a little bit easier. Now we can kind of think of it as being in two pieces. So let's solve for it. What's minus b? What's A, B, and C in this quadratic? Um, 6. So it would be negative 6 okay. plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4, negative 40. Yep. You know what? I always have a way of doing this that I think results in the fewest amount of mistakes. And that's no matter, don't try to do that in your head. It's easy enough to do in your head, but if you write it out like this every single time, you'd be much less likely to make an error. Okay, and it's important to recognize that that's always subtracting. So I'm subtracting a negative 40 which okay. is the same as adding a positive 40. So now I have minus 6 plus or minus, minus square root square of seven four. 6 uh, all over 2. Does 76 mm -hmm. simplify at all? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's at least divisible by 4. It's 9... Two, nine, two root 19. Okay. Okay. Now I can cancel the 2s and the 6, and so I can simplify this answer even further. Negative 3, Negative three plus, or minus, plus or minus root 19. 19. And there's your solution. Now, you realize that that means that x equals minus 3 plus that, and x equals minus 3 minus that. Yeah, I get Whenever that. Whenever you have a plus or minus, that it means that. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, um, let's see, do you want to change? Uh, it seems like you don't use that Monday appointment very much. You want to move it to Tuesday as an automatic, or? Well, I, it was just... Uh, it's up to you. If you'd rather keep it on Monday, I'm willing to. Could, could we keep it on Monday? Sure. Yeah, no, right I mean, now I got you on Monday and Wednesday at 4.30. And it's fine if you need to modify that. I don't have any problem with it. I just thought it might work better for you if we moved it to when you've been wanting it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good luck on your test or your quiz, whatever it is that's coming up. Yeah. Talk Could you send me the link? Could you send me the link to the YouTube thing again? Send you the links to see this recording? Yeah. Here, let me... Um, Paste it and go to meeting right now.
In other words, the easiest way for me to do that is this way right here. If you look in your chat window, do you see that link? Yeah. Click on it and then save it. In other words, if you click on it, it'll open in your browser. And then you'll just be able to save it and you won't have to do any typing. I don't know where it went. Uh, Is it no longer in there? Let me paste it in there one more time. Now, if you go to the Go to Meeting control panel, go to the chat window and click on that link, it should open that link in your browser. Okay. Okay? And um, if you have problems finding it, zip me a text or an email and I'll, I'll, I'll email you this link. But that should work for you. Sure thing. Thank you. All right, Julie. Bye-bye.